Good afternoon, church. The title of my lesson tonight is Principles of Leadership. Most of the, well, it will be from Judges, uh, the book of Judges, chapter 6, uh, up to 8. Winston Churchill became Prime Minister of Britain in 1940, early 1940, one of the most challenging years for the kingdom. Within months of his ascension, Nazi Germany had fully conquered France and was carrying out bombing raids on British cities daily. Britain stood alone in Europe against a German threat. However, Churchill would not allow his home to fall to the Germans. With riveting speeches, he inspired the British people to defy the odds and hold out against the Nazis, eventually resulting in the defeat of the Germans in 1945. Winston Churchill inspired the people to fight not for selfish reasons, not for superficial reasons, but for the survival of their nation, their freedoms, and their family. Churchill proved that a leader must be able to inspire people to rise and fight for a greater purpose. As we well know, there is no greater purpose than God's will. Therefore, let us see what, through what principles Gideon inspired the people and became a great leader. Now first, to see how what happens when we have good principles of leadership, we must look at what happens when we have a bad leader. Um, Joshua had died a few chapters before Judges chapter 6. And after that, Israel quickly turned away from God. They followed the idols of their neighbors and abandoned God and, all that he, and forgot all that he had done for them. Time and time again, Israel would do this. They would run to God when things got tough. And then they would, once God saved them, they would quickly turn back to the idols. Be saved again, turn away again, over and over. At the start of our lesson, Israel turned away from God once more. And because of this, the Midianites were able to conquer Israel and occupy their land for seven years. In Judges 6, uh, chapter 6, verse 6, it says, So Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites, and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. Israel during this time followed bad leadership. They certainly had leaders, but the leaders they chose to listen to drove them away from God and into the clutches of neighboring idols. The people sought their own glory, not God's glory, and thus they were driven to ruin. This is what happens when a leader does not have proper principles. If the goal is to truly bring glory to God, then everything will fall into place. Now that we've seen what happens when we have bad principles in a leader, we must see what happens when we have good principles in a leader. We enter Gideon. Judges chapter 6, verses 14 through 16 states, Then the Lord turned to him, Gideon, and said, Go in this might of yours, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? So he said to them, to him, O my Lord, how can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. The Lord said to him, Surely I will be with you, and you shall defeat the Midianites as one man. As we see here, Gideon was not some bodybuilder. He wasn't experienced in military leadership or even war fighting. To us, it would seem he was completely unqualified, yet Gideon had one of the most important qualities. He was willing to listen to and obey God. This, was the, this is the first principle of leadership, being, really, being willing to listen to and to obey God. Now, after God told him this, he commanded Gideon to cut down his father's idol to Baal and instead build an altar to God and sacrifice to him. This was incredibly dangerous for Gideon to do. As we see in verse 30, it states that... Uh, sorry, that um, bring, the, the men of the city said to Joash, his father, Bring out your son that he may die, because he has torn down the altar of Baal, and because he has cut down the wooden image that was beside it. The people wanted to kill Gideon for this. Now, luckily... Gideon's father was able to ward off the mob, and indeed Gideon was safe. Following God's word ensured that he was able to be successful and protected him from all the human plots, and indeed the devil's plots. By, uh, by listening to God and trusting in him, he was able to be successful. Now, his next key principle is his trust in God. Skipping ahead to chapter 7 of Judges, Gideon was able to raise 32,000 soldiers to fight the Midianites. Now God said this was too many, lest Israel claim the victory was by its own hand and not his. Thus Gideon was ordered to send home those who were afraid, and only 10,000 remained. God still saw this number as too many, lest again Israel take the credit. Thus he had Gideon make them drink from uh, some water. 
Only those who lapped the water like a dog were allowed to stay, leaving a mere 300 men. 300 soldiers. Even the bravest of leaders would look at the odds, 300 against an uncountable enemy, and shudder. However, Gideon had something, a trick up his sleeve. That was, he had trust in God. As it states in Judges 7, starting in verse 13, And when Gideon had come, there was a man telling a dream to his companion. He said, I have had a dream. To my surprise, a loaf of barley bread tumbled into the camp of Midian. It came to a tent and struck it so that it fell and overturned, and the tents collapsed. Then his companion answered and said, This is nothing else but the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel. Into his hand God has delivered Midian and the whole camp. And so it was, when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and its interpretation, that he worshipped. He returned to the camp of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord has delivered the camp of Midian into your hand. Thus, despite extreme odds, Gideon trusted God and prepared for war. The battle came. Gideon and his 300 men with pitchers and trumpets in hand stood around the camp. They blew into their trumpets and smashed the pitchers down to the ground and shouted, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. The army of the Midianites turned to chaos and fled, enabling the army of Israel to totally subdue them. Gideon's trust in God handed him the victory. Now, the final principle of leadership shown by Gideon was one of the most crucial. Gideon gave the glory to God. In Judges chapter 8, verses 22 through 23, it states, the, <clears throat> the men of Israel said to Gideon, Rule over us, both you and your son and your grandson also, for you have delivered us from the hand of Midian. But Gideon said to them, I will not rule over you, nor shall my son rule over you. The Lord shall rule over you. Gideon had all the popularity in Israel. He could have easily used the popularity to become the first king of Israel, taking the glory for himself and shunning God. However, he refused. He made it well known that God was responsible for their victory. Therefore, he was blessed through this and lived a long life. This was even more important as the, Israeli, as the Jewish people continued asking for kings on and on and on, later getting a king. Indeed, if Gideon didn't do this, it would have driven the nation of Israel even further away from God. But through his own humility and his willingness and his principle of giving God the glory, he uh, blessed his own uh, life and blessed Israel. Overall, Gideon's life teaches us three important leadership principles. The first is willingness to listen to and obey God. The second is putting your trust in God. And the third is making sure that in whatever you do, you give the glory to God. Originally, I was going to name this lesson the three principles of spiritual leadership. However, I felt that the spiritual aspect of it, while it is spiritual, in reality, these principles of leadership can be applied to everything in the world, in spiritual leadership, worldly leadership, everything. And in all things, they will be blessed. Uh, you know, God has chosen time and time again, we see people that aren't the most, the most strong or the most qualified. He chooses people that are seen as the lower ends of society, people that aren't experienced. He does this because those people have principles, these principles, principles of following and obeying God. By taking hold of these principles, we too can reflect God in our own lives, glorifying him and bringing his message to all people. Now, um, thank you so much uh, as we stand and sing. Uh, if anyone wishes to devote their life to Christ, to honor and worship him and take advantage of the sacrifice and the gift of everlasting redemption that Jesus has given to us, then please uh, come forward as we stand and sing. <laughs> 